Alrighty, well, welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Janine Ford. And whether you're a parent or not, you know growing up is difficult, and sometimes you don't always fit in. Do you remember those times? Well, here to help us learn how to handle rejection is Master's Level Therapist Jane Fendelman. Jane, thank you for being with us. It's so wonderful to be back with you again, Janine. And good to see you back here. That's uh -huh. right. Um, let's talk about, first of all, rejection and, and how to deal with rejection. And where does it first start? I think it starts in the beginning with you know, I heard Maya Angelou once say, quoted by Oprah, do your parents' face light up when you walk into the room? So I think it starts right there. Okay. I think if we feel special, not that your parents have you on a big pedestal. You know how some parents get the, the right. kid is the center of their universe? That's sure. not healthy either, but it's a healthy balance where when the child comes in, you see the love in the parent's face. I think it starts there. I think, I think they get it. You know, whether you say right. it or not, I think they get it. Yeah. The, and they start, to, they start to build their self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So they start to build good self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And what you're mirroring for them. Now, what can make a, a child feel rejected? When parents are late, believe it or not, and I know parents are really busy these days, and they're, it's a very busy life, and usually both parents are working. and getting, Or if both parents aren't working, the parent who's not working is getting the child to all of their activities and games and things like that. But um, the parent, if, if they're late... We think that's not a big deal, but the child is standing there all alone and things are happening in this little child's psyche that says, I'm not important enough for my parent to want to be here on time. That's one of the things. Another thing is if you don't show up for games and activities, you oh, don't have to go yeah. to all of them, but try yeah. to get to most of them. Or yeah, that's hard is when you go to um, a game or something and mm -hmm. you see the same three parents there and you know there are, you know, <laughs> ten kids on the team and that's yes. hard. Exactly. Yeah, they're not exactly. getting the support they need. If you punish, if you punish by criticizing and shaming, that can de be very destructive to self-esteem. If you withhold love when in lieu of good behavior, like parents, you can act angry without, with without withholding love. You can be angry. You can have a full-on rage and the person still feels loved by you. I used to tell my drug alcohol group, you can say to, to, your, to your partner, I love you and I don't want you to poison your body with drugs and alcohol because I want a long, happy life with you, so please stop poisoning your body. Right. Now, I look and sound angry, but, but, but every word love. is love and every love. word That's is right. respectful. Now, how can a, a child, like if they're going to school and they're feeling rejected maybe by other classmates or something, mm -hmm. how can you teach your child to deal with some of that rejection out in the world? Well, one thing I love to tell children is remember that the bully is a person who feels less than, therefore they have to pull, try to pull you down. So, <clears throat> so of course, we're going to start in the home. The, the child feels good about himself. I always ask kids, tell me three good things about yourself every day. I want to hear th three good things. I want you to, it's not bragging, it's not conceit. I want to know that you know that there's good, goodness about you. And then they take that to school. And when they take that to school, then they don't have that thing that we call collapsing syndrome. Now, this happens in children and adults. A child, if they get uh, in trouble mm -hmm. at school or at home, and uh, if a child doesn't have strong self-esteem, they just collapse inside and they feel like they're, they're just not a good person. But if they have good self-esteem, they'll take feedback, they'll take constructive criticism, and instead of collapsing, I, I like to teach kids to say, okay, this doesn't mean I'm a bad person. This means this person wants me to look at this thing. Right. So let me look at this thing. Is there any truth in this thing? Is this something that I'd like to change? Yeah. Okay, maybe this is something I would like to experiment with changing. And, and then maybe I like that change or I don't like that change. I'm going to decide for me. Deepak Chopra calls it being self-referring. And, and we kind of get programmed to need approval just from the bassinet because, and the need for approval is crippling. Yeah. So like from the time you're a little tiny baby and people went to your little bassinet, Janine, and yeah. they, they looked in your face and they said, come on, smile oh, for me, smile yeah. for me. Yeah. And they kept on in your face, yeah. goo goo ga <laughs> until you finally smiled. And then when you smiled, they go, yay. Yeah. They're, you're yes. getting programmed to need approval. Oh, and so, they never got out of your face. You know, they never got out of your face. <laughs> now, Jane, we're, um, I'm so sorry. We're out of time. It's such yes. a great topic. Now, how can mm -hmm. people get a hold of you? They can go to my website, janefendelman.com. Uh, they can call me, 602 Five three two zero three three five. And there's the number on your I'm screen. I'm in Central Phoenix. And yes, and she has the best energy. You're just great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Good you, to see honey. You again. You're wonderful. You're awesome.